Hi guys, this is Jenna. I'm uh, going to show you how I came up with this sunflower painting today. Um, hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, if you have never painted with us before, I'm going to give you a little spiel here first. Um, and welcome. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> uh, make sure you, uh, if you could please, subscribe to our channel. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Um, if you do end up painting any of our stuff, make sure you, uh, post the pictures so we can see, you know, we'd love to <laughs> see what you guys have come up with. Um, uh, if this is your first time painting with us, um, supply-wise, I have, um, my tray of acrylic paints and my paper plate. That's where I'm going to mix my colors. Um, and I have paper towels and a water cup to rinse my brushes. I've got three brushes here. I don't think I'm going to use this big guy, so I'm just going to move him off to the side. You totally can if you want to. I um, will probably not, but whatever you're comfortable with is what you should use. Um, I'm going to use this little guy for any little details later. Um, this one I'm going to use to mix my colors. So I'll, I, will, I will scoop my colors from my egg carton onto my plate. Um, he'll be my measuring brush too, so like two scoops of white. That's my scoop measurement, but you'll see that as we go. Um, uh, the colors that I use, um, I mean, I'll show you how, and you know, I'll, I'll come up with hopefully as close as I can to the colors that I used, but you can really use whatever colors you want to. Um, I liked kind of the vibration of the green and the red and the blue to the red and orange, like it just it just kind of depends what you want to do color wise um, but if you are changing up the colors you can still do the same steps that I have it's just you'll use different colors so uh, just have fun with it um, we're gonna do a lot of bouncing back and forth um, for this because I have to do we'll have to do a few different layers of both the yellow and the green before we do these top coats um, top detailed pieces uh, so just try to use you know the thin the thin paint paint your use your paint as thin as possible when you're painting just so it's dry and we can kind of paint on top of it but obviously something like this you can pause and go back to um, but the first thing we're gonna do is mix up a darker yellow um, so I'll show you how to do that we'll do that first um, let's see I'm gonna do Kind of a half scoop of white. And I know that I'm going to have to do a few layers of this color. So I'm going to mix up a big pile. So I think maybe five or six scoops of yellow, big scoops of yellow. And then I want to have it be a little kind of an orangey marigold, kind of a deeper yellow. So I'm going to add a little bit of red. The red is pretty overpowering, so I'm going to add little bits at a time. And really your color right now, this is just going to be the main like darker yellow. We're going to do a lighter yellow on top. Um, so for this guy, I think that's almost a little more red. And do a tiny little bit more. want it to where it's almost like if you added a little more red it would be orangey so I think that's good if you can see okay so what we're gonna do now is draw out your flower so if you want to you can use your tiny brush I'm just gonna keep using my big brush um, my circle is, is a little, it's a little top center, um, but I mean, it, it's up to you how you map them out. Um, I'm going to just generally draw where that circle is going to be, 
Um, obviously when we come in with the black, we can make him a little bit bigger and these lines too will kind of extend that center part. But for now, I'm just gonna go there so I have a general circle for the center. And what I like to do is I'll draw the four like center petals and then I'll do the two in, in between like my those center petals. So I'm gonna do those four first. So what I like to do is I'm gonna start with this top guy and then just turn my canvas. I can see that he's way off center, so I'm just gonna adjust that circle a little bit. But I'm just gonna keep spinning my canvas because that'll help me to kind of center my circle too. Okay, and then from here, there's going to be two petals in between. So in between here, there'll be two. In between here, there'll be two. So you can make them shape-wise um, however you want to. Keep in mind the green is going to go in between. So if any of your petals kind of look like you want them to be shaped a little bit differently, when we go in with our green, you can adjust them You know, however you want to. Even when you're doing this, when you go back in with your green, you can totally reshape your yellow if you need to. So just keep that in mind. Okay, and then once you have all of your petals, you can color them in and remember, keep them thin, keep the paint thin so that when we come back, um, we can paint over top of it. And don't worry if it's kind of see-through because we'll come back and make it darker. And for something like this, um, instead of painting the edges over with each color, I'll go back later and do the whole thing with this darker green just to give it kind of like a, a frame around the edge. But it's up to you. If you want to, as you're going around, if you want to have these petals kind of extend around to wrap around the canvas, you can do that too if you want. But I'll just save it for later and paint it one solid color. All right, and once you have all of your petals painted in, if you want to go around and adjust any of the shapes before we color, I mean, before we do our green, I would do that now.
and then just go around again make sure any thick blobs that you have make sure you spread those things thin because we'll need to do another layer of this darker yellow here don't worry about the center because we're going to go over that again if it got a little messy inside with the yellow paint don't worry for now okay so what we're going to do now while we let this dry we're going to paint in our green um, so you can rinse your brush off and we're going to make a darker green so we're going to go for this like sage green this lighter green will come back and add that later so for now let's see one two three four so five scoops of green and i'm going to do a little bit of red So now you have this kind of, you know, hunter, army, green, darker color. Now we're going to start adding white, um, just because my brush has green on it. Just did it from the side so that you're not swiping all this green along your paint. And just add little bits at a time. I think that's as light as I want it, but I think I want it to still have a little more of a gray tone. So I'm going to add a little more black. spread my paint out here on my plate, but try to keep it in a pile so that it doesn't dry out on you. Alright. I think that looks good. I'm going to do a touch more white. Okay, so now painting in the petals. You want to be careful not to go over your yellow too much. Just because it'll drag the, the yellow to the green, the green to the yellow. Um, if you want to use your little brush, you can to do these tiny pieces. Um, and then you can come back and, and paint in, you know, the bigger pieces with this bigger brush. Um, I'm going to leave this here because I'm going to come back and do that. But for now, I'm going to go and do these like tinier pieces that have a tiny space of canvas in between the petals. Um, they are going to be outlined, so you don't really need to go too far down to the center because this black is going to be here. So keep that in mind when you're going, and just watch you don't really you don't stamp your hand as you're doing this. But um, actually, I'm going to start here, and we are going to have to do more than one layer of this green. And I already see that it's brighter green than I want it to be. So when I do my next layer I'll just add a little more black and a little more white to it but for now you can just do this because this is just our first layer here but just paint in the center and then kind of extend that because we can come back and do this with your bigger brush and just work your way around
same thing with same thing with the the green. Spread out any big blobs that you have because we'll come back and do another coat of this too. Um, that little brush you can just pop into your water cup. We'll come back to him later, but for now, just go around and finish your green. Again, don't worry about those see-through kind of brush strokes because we're going to do another layer of this green anyway. So just fill in all your green, work your way around. So now that our first layer of green is there, I'm going to rinse my brush off because we're going to go back and do some yellow. So just rinse it off really good because you don't want any of that green to be in there. And make sure when you dry your brush that you dry it really good. If there's water, um, sometimes it gets stuck in this like metal part here. So you want to make sure you dry that really good. If the water drips on what you've already painted, it'll kind of pull the paint away, which we don't want, but if that does happen, just kind of pat it dry um, and let that area dry before you touch it up with more paint. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to, my yellow dried pretty bright yellow. I still want it to be a little more orange, so 
I'm going to add a little more red to my yellow color. Yeah, okay. And then um, a tiny touch of white. It's not really going to alter your color that much. It's just going to cream it out a little bit. It'll help it to make a um, more of a solid second coat of your yellow. So now when you're painting your yellow in, you want to not go close to your green because it'll drag it into your yellow. So you can almost leave a space um, to where, where you're painting. So like if I go here, you can see I'm leaving like a little bit of a space in between the yellow and the green. Do that around your petals so that your yellow doesn't touch your green and you're not dragging your yellow into your green. I mean, your green into your yellow. Uh, if you want to, this is one of those times where you can pause it and kind of come back to it. You can pause it and um, wait till your green is dry and then come back. Okay. See, I got some green. So all I did was kind of brush over where the green was and like wiped the green off on my paper towel if that happens to you guys. Don't panic. Almost there. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are as in the zone with this one as I am. <laughs> Alrighty, it didn't take very long. Okay, I think that's good. And I have mine, my orange um, to my yellow kind of is, is stripey. Um, in that one, you can kind of see like the differences between the yellow. I like how that looks. If you want it to be more solid, you can let this dry and then do a whole nother coat of this. Um, since I changed my color up a little bit, you can see the underneath color kind of poking through. I'm going to leave that because I like when the colors, um, when my petals have like multi-tones like that. Um, but it's, it's up to you, whatever you want to do with your painting at home. It's 
totally fine. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the green. Um, same as we did before, kind of being careful of your petals, but um, I'm gonna add a little, I want it to be more of this like sagey eucalyptus kind of green color instead of like a bright green. So I'm gonna play with my green a little bit. I'm gonna add a little more white to it and I'm gonna add a little more black. It's funny sometimes when you're mixing your colors, like you like them on the plate and then you go to paint them and they, even just how these two colors are relating to each other and kind of bouncing off, it's like changing the color on the canvas. So for now, because I can, I'm gonna add a little bit to it before I do my next coat here. All right, so I think that's good. So now I'm gonna do my second coat. If any of your green is still wet, don't try to go over it, let it dry. Um, I think this one here is still way dry. Like some of these pieces are still um, pretty wet. I'm gonna leave those. Um, so yeah, I'll probably start over here. I'm gonna leave these to be my last ones because I want those to be dry when I come around. Um, and same thing, I'm going to go in with my, my little brush to do the center, and then I'll come around and do the big brush towards the end. And then you could just... thing too. Nice. Alright, so some of these little ones I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the whole thing with this tiny brush. When you're doing um, these tiny pieces, if you need to, you can use your pinky kind of um, like an anchor. Um, like if you put your if you put your pinky, if you move your hands down, you put your pinky on your canvas. You can use that kind of like an anchor to hold your hand steady if you need to. Um, as you're doing this, uh, I've been kind of using the corner of my canvas. Like I'll I'll put my pinky on the canvas as I'm going, and that kind of helps to hold my my finger. I mean my hand steady if you need to you can hold your hand through you know like using your other hand kind of as an anchor um, just play with and see what you're comfortable doing
So this guy's still pretty wet. But because I don't know how to edit and stop and come back, I'm just gonna go over it and hope for the best. Don't do that at home, folks. <laughs> Let it try. Yep, see how it's kind of scraping my paint off underneath? It's giving it kind of like a streaky look, but I can come back and fix that. Okay. Green is good. It's so weird. It's drying really dark again. Well, I like it. I'm going to go with it. Um, rinse off these green brushes. Drying really good. We're going to start to build up our middle here. So, dry your brushes off good. And we're going to... Um, looks black, but we're gonna actually mix up like a dark gray. And I have this dark blue that we're gonna use here and here. So we're going to, uh, actually let's do the orange first before we do the black, I forgot about the orange. Um, orange, we're gonna do a scoop of yellow. Eh, two scoops of yellow. And we're gonna do almost a full scoop of red. The red, again, is pretty overpowering, so just you're going for like a bright orangey color here, which I think that's good. Okay, kind of like a neon. Going to add a little more red. Okay, now with this, you can do your tiny brush, you can use this medium brush. Um, with your paper towels, put it in the, you can put it in your paper towels and just kind of squish and then it flattens it. You can use that if you want to. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean. So I flattened it. So now when I go in to get my paint, I'm going to keep flattening it, flip it over, flat it, flat, flat, so kind of like squishing it so that it has a thin edge. Um, and then from the center here, you're going to flick it into your yellow to only have it kind of going right at the um, like base of each petal coming off from the center. So just, um, I don't really have, you can kind of outline the petals and then just brush this into your yellow. You don't want a lot of paint on your brush. So kind of start in with the white and then you're just going to brush up into your yellow. And if your yellow is still a little wet, that might even help. It kind of blends it together. Keep going back and flattening your brush if you're using this uh, middle brush here. If you're using your tiny brush, you can still do the same thing. Kind of flatten it. That'll help you out a little. And this, you can do as much of this as you want to. Um, actually, I think I'm doing more than what I have over there, but I like how it looks, so I'm just kind of going with it. You're kind of following like the shape of the petal as you go around.
Okay. Looks like I need a little bit more missing tube. Okay. I just kind of brush them out into the yellow if we need to. Now I've rinsed this red off, we're gonna mix up that black. Um, I'm gonna mix the blue first. Okay, so when you're mixing up this blue, there's gonna be blue with a little bit of black, and then I will use that to then go in to mix my black color. It saves me from rinsing my brush too many times. Um, so what we're gonna do is, two. I'm gonna do two scoops of black, Nope, sorry, blue. <laughs> Two scoops of blue, and then a tiny little touch of black. I want it to be almost like a navy, kind of a bright navy color. Um, that that navy color we're going to use up here, this is going to be two-toned, so it's going to be a darker blue, and we're going to come back and do a lighter blue on top of it. So for now, And I can see I have, with your plate, if you've been following my scoop measurements, I have a lot of paint left. Um, we'll probably still have a lot of paint left even when you finish. You can just throw this in a Ziploc bag. Um, it'll help to save it and it doesn't dry out. And then you can use this for another painting to help kind of extend your supplies a little bit more. Um, you can do that with your egg carton too. If you pour too much paint in here, you can put that in a Ziploc bag too and come back to it later. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing now that I just did with my um, orange, but not as much. So like the blue, I kind of maybe maybe have two stripes of this blue. Um, some of the bigger ones I have three. So keep that in mind as you're going around. And I'm just brushing my... Um, I don't want a lot of paint on my brush, so I'm kind of just wiping it off on the plate here. And then just go through... Sorry, I had a big gob. Um, same thing you just did with your um, orange. firework. <laughs> um, be careful too, if you brush too much of this blue into your orange, like if you go over and over and over and over the same spot, it might make it kind of like a greenish brown color. So just be careful as you're going through. I'm almost just single stroking that like over a spot once so that it's not mixing into another color. And if you do this, and then you go back and you think that maybe a spot might be too dark. Um, you can come back down then with your yellow and go over top of the blue and the orange. So just kind of keep an eye on what you're doing. See if you like it or not. Um, for now, we're going to do the black so that we can do this black part, let it dry. We'll do some of the yellow while that's drying and then we'll come back and do more of the center. Um, so for the black, I'm just gonna mix a tiny bit of white into that black, so not quite a full scoop. And then I'm gonna do one, two, three, four scoops of black. When you mix this up, it's pretty much gonna just stay black. It's okay, the white's just gonna help you cream it out a little bit, help you make more of a solid coat on your canvas. Okay, so now when you're doing this circle, um, you don't want to make it too big at first and then like, oh God, now what do I do? Because the black is really hard to go for, cover over. If you do that, just rewind the steps later, you know, let it dry. If you do the black too big, leave it, let it dry, come back. You can go over all of the stuff that we just did. Go back over with your yellow, go back over with your blue and orange, and then fast forward to where we are now. So what I like to do, my white here, that was my original circle. 
So I'm going to just kind of stroke over that first and then get a feel for how much bigger I want to make it. So I already see I want it to be a whole nother stroke around bigger. And I don't really worry about the circle. Like, it doesn't need to be a perfect, solid, symmetrical circle. It's kind of, I have it bumpy around the edge anyway. So don't drive yourself crazy trying to make it a perfect circle. I mean, you can if you want to, if that's what you need for your soul. But for me, I like it when it's bumpy and a little, you know, asymmetrical. Um, and I'm making it kind of, see the brush strokes? I'm making it kind of bumpy. We're going to go back later and I'm going to do these like bumpy pieces to it. But for now, I'm just kind of like stroking the black around it little bits at a time. Um, and I'm still going to make it a little bit bigger. So see, just do it little bits at a time and then you won't overwhelm yourself with this giant black circle, you know, that's the center of the flower that's way too big. So just build it up little bits at a time. And then once you get this, once you get your shape that you're happy with, you can paint this in. Keep it thin because we need to come back later and add the yellow and the blue. So I'm just going to kind of brush in here. And then we're going to do the same thing with the black over the blue and the orange. But I kind of only have it like in the center and then I have maybe like two on the edge. So um, I'm going to wipe my brush. I'm actually going to then take it on a paper towel and wipe it a little bit on a paper towel so that it's not solid black up on our, on our um, flower. And I'm going to brush kind of up from where the center is. You see you're just adding little bits of black to those petals too, okay? So you're going to do a center piece and then some on each side. And don't worry if you're, oh, I got a little around there. I wanted it to. Um, your black that's the center. See how I'm like wiping the paint off? I'm going to come back later and uh, fix that up. But for now, I'm, I'm using it to kind of draw my black lines up. So I'm going to wipe and then I can go back to it. This one lost like all the blue. This one did too. Huh. Alright, so now I can go back, fix up my black. You might not even need to add more paint. The paint's still wet, so it kind of still spreads around. Okay. And then to brush. And we're going to, uh, if you want to, another layer of the green. If some of your spots are still a little see-through. Um, I would go ahead and do some of those pieces now. Actually, I'm going to add a little white to my green here. There we go. Alright, so you might need to do three coats of green. But again, yours at home might be a little different than mine.
Yep, even some of my, even some of the pieces that were still really see-through are covered up with this green, so you might need to do three coats. Sorry, I think I said that already, but <laughs> just kind of see what yours looks like if you want it to have another solid coat to it. You do it. Oh, thought that was my last one. I see. That's this spot too. Like I see, I almost painted in my yellow. I wanted it. I just wanted it to be finished. Don't rush. Take a breath. Remember, you gotta slow down. <laughs> you don't wanna mess up your painting. Because you've been working so hard on it. One more. See when you got a little bumpy here. Okay. All right, I think my green is solid. Uh, now we're going to go in with some lighter yellow. So the lighter yellow I don't have on the entire petal. I have just kind of some brush strokes over top just to lighten up some of these pieces. When you're doing that, try not to get too close to your black and your blue and your orange because you don't want to wipe that and then wipe it up here if you get some on your brush. So just be careful as you're doing that. Um, I'm going to, with my middle brush, I'm just going to take some of that yellow color that was the original petal color and I'm just going to move it off to the side going to add a scoop of white to it to lighten it up. Okay, you can make this as light as you want to. You can do this in three steps too if you want to do, actually I'll do that so I can show you what I mean, but you can do this lighter yellow and then come back and add more white and even make that yellow. I mean, um, you know, another highlight. Sorry, there's some black still on my brush. Okay, um, when you do this, you're just gonna brush into some of your yellow. So I'm almost just doing some pieces to brighten it up a little bit. You don't need to be, you, you know, you're still keeping some of your darker yellow. You're just brushing in some of this white just to give it some highlight strokey pieces. And again, watch out for your black, your black, blue, red that you have down on the bottom there, okay? You see, it's not really doing much. It's just lightening it up a little bit. It's giving it another tone to that petal. Okay. Now, you're going to use this yellow. We're going to stamp in our center part. So your black is still probably a little wet. Um, this yellow here, that's what you're doing. And this yellow here, the blue will come back to, okay? When you're doing this yellow, you might have to go back and forth a little bit with your black. It just kind of depends how dark your yellow is. So what you're going to do with your brush, I'm stamping in some of my yellow. And here, we'll do the center first. I'm going to make that center circle with the yellow. If your black is dry, this might just paint right over top of it. But see how my black is still a little wet? So it's picking up some of that yellow. So you're gonna make a center with this. You're just kind of dabbing the yellow around. 
to mix into some of that black. Now, you might need to go back in with some of your black to darken some of those pieces, but you'll see as you're going, it depends how dark, I mean how um, wet your black is. So you're just adding a little highlight piece. If your black is pretty wet, come back to it. Let it dry a little bit. You can come back and stamp more yellow in there later. But I think that's good. You're just kind of highlighting that piece. And then you're going to go, um, I'm going to leave, actually maybe I'll do it a little bigger. And move your brush around so that you don't see those, like that it was a, you know, a stamp of your paintbrush. You don't want that rectangle stamp piece. You can flatten your brush this way, that way. Just kind of move it around to give it different shapes. Okay. Go back in with a little yellow, brighten it up a little. So again, move your brush so you have different patterns in there so it doesn't look like a rectangle stamp from your brush. Um, and then this outside part, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to work my way around the circle and then just keep going to fill that in. Now don't worry about this line here. I'm going to leave somewhat of a space. That's going to be the blue. What you want to do is go around, but you're leaving almost like a black outline. Now if you cover that up with your yellow, we can always go back and stamp in more black. But keep that in mind when you're going around. You want to kind of leave... You want to leave that black that's the outside kind of shadow piece. And do this slowly so you don't get that, you know, a repetitive um, the shape of your brush, okay? My brush has a lot of black. I must have scooped up a lot of the yellow, so I'm just going to wipe that off with my paper towel. And then just go back, go back and start stamping again. Now I have my outside part darker, this outside ring darker, this I have lighter. Um, if your yellow gets too bright on the outside, you can go back over with your black. So just kind of play with it until you like how it looks. If you need to go back and add more black, you totally can. If right now you need to add more black, just dip your brush into your black. You don't have to do a solid line, but just add more black to the edge, kind of over where the yellow is, if you need to, okay? That'll help to give you almost like an outline of your outside piece. Okay? So we'll leave that like that for now. While that's drying, we can do... Um, the lighter green pieces. So rinse your brush off really good and dry it really good and then I'm going to again I'm going to keep my original green just in case I need to so I kind of split it into two piles and then I'm going to add a scoop of white to half of it To make it lighter green. Um, this you can do as contrasted if you want to add more white to it so that it's really light. That's up to you. And again, I'm going to wipe it off so that when I go on my canvas, it's not a big hunk of white paint. I mean, um, lighter paint. And then I'm just, I'm brushing into the green. Kind of in that trying, wow, those are still really wet. Go this way. You're just kind of doing the center, and I like the brush stroke look for mine, so that's how I did mine. Um, if your green is still wet, just come back, let it, you know, let it dry, come back a little later, and you can do this part. Ooh.
going to add a little more white. To that lighter green. And I'm just going to go around again and do a little bit more just to brighten up that green a little bit. It's got like three tones in there. Makes it a little lighter. Easier for you guys to see. Now you can do this with your little brush if you want to. I'm I felt comfortable enough using my middle brush because I have I know I have enough space. I mean my space isn't too little in between. If you want to use your little brush, you can. All right, I think that's good with my green. I'm gonna rinse my brush off. We're gonna see how dry your center is to see if we can do this blue. Now, if this part is this part is too wet still, we can go and do the outlines and then come back and do this center part. Um, I think mine's okay for me to show you, but for you guys at home, I would let this dry this part completely before you go on with your blue. Um, I'm going to add a tiny touch of white to my dark blue that I used on my petals here. We're going to do two tones of this so I'm going to go around now with my brush strokes and then um, I'll do the outline of the flower and then I'll come back and do the lighter blue. For this part if you want to use your tiny brush you can so I'm just going to cover up this space here with this blue. So mine's still pretty wet, so I'm going to keep wiping my brush off when I pick up all this yellow. So you're going to go around in a circle. So wherever your comfort zone is with my, like with your strokes, just keep turning your canvas so that you keep having the same, you know, comfort level in your brush strokes. You know, like over here for me, I'm not going to like eh, move your arm and try to figure out how to finagle that. Just keep moving the canvas around so that you're comfortable with your brush strokes. And you're just creating that center blue circle. Okay, so I have my, I have my dark blue. Now I'm going to let this dry. We'll add a little white to this. We'll come back and do the lighter blue around it. So for now, we're going to outline the flowers. And we need this little center guy. So again, we're going to do that dry brush. So dip into your black. Wipe it off. Oops, sorry. Wipe it off on your paper towel. And you're going to go in and kind of follow like the line of your petal. So like this guy is pretty center. I'm going to have this guy have a center little crease piece. If you've got one that kind of like wiggles to the right or to the left, have your center line kind of follow that. Okay. And you can go as dark with this as you want to. Right now it looks pretty shocking because you don't have the petals outlined yet. Don't don't hate it just yet. Just wait till we do the outline. That'll help, I promise. Right now it just looks shocking because there's nothing. It's so bright. And then you've got these weird black lines going through. Add one here. 
Okay, so now, same thing with your leverage. When you're outlining your petals, find a spot that you're comfortable with. Like I like this, I like this top corner area. So I'm just gonna keep turning my canvas until um, all my petals are outlined. Now when you're doing this, try not to push too hard on your brush. Um, the harder you push on your brush, the thicker the line will be. So, you know, dip it in your paint, wipe it off a little bit, and then go through and add your outlines. Um, try to just go as slow as you can. Those pieces too, in between, if you want them to be pointier and have them go all the way down to the center, you can. Um, when you're doing that, just kind of pick a line and follow it. And then if you need to, you, know, you can kind of darken that center piece. So just go slow, try to breathe through it. A lot of people hold their breath. <laughs> um, just, you know, go slow. You can always come back to if you need to um, with your green you know and go back like if your lines got too thick you can come back later and add more green to it to thin out those lines you know on the other on, on the other side I mean Sorry, there was a big blob of black. Okay, see how just these black outlines make this black line a little softer? Kind of funny. I mean, funny probably isn't the right word for it, but you know what I mean. Because I bet some of you hated that black line. <laughs> but now you're okay with it. Or I hope you are okay with it. If you're not okay with it, you can always go back. If these black lines bother you, you can go back later, add more yellow to it to cover them up if you want to. All right, got a few left.
think I'm good for now. Now what I'm going to do, in between some of where those petals are, I don't like how it looks like it's such a solid circle, so I'm going to brush those out a little bit with my with my brush. So almost like, like where your um, petals meet. Just kind of brushing, and you can do it where the center is too, if you want. Just to kind of brush out some of those the black so it's not such like a solid line. Making it a little bumpier. Okay. Alright, so now all we have to do is to do this blue um, rinse your black off your brush, and then you're just going to add a little bit of white to this blue. Okay, and then I'm not covering up the blue that I have here, I'm almost just doing this light blue in between it. So you can still see some of that dark blue. The light blue is almost just like highlight on it. If you want to make it lighter, you can go through again, add a more white to it to brush through over that blue. It's up to you. Um, but I think I'm done. So, uh, hey, thanks for painting with me. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you could please subscribe to our channel. Um, and if you do paint, we'd love to see them. So post them on uh, Facebook, send them to us. Um, if you could, greatly appreciated. I uh, hope you guys all have a good day. Take care. See you soon. <laughs> Thanks for coming.